ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to the nazara technologies limited q2 and h1 fy24 earnings conference call hosted by icici securities as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need any assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded this conference call may contain forward looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs opinions and expectations of the company as on date of this call these statements are not the guarantees of the future performance and involved risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict i now hand the conference over to mr abhishek banerji thank you and over to you sir uh hi hello everyone uh, welcome uh, to the nazara q2 uh, fi24 uh, conference call uh, we have with us from nazara management uh, mr nitish mittar sen founder and ceo mr sudhir kamath uh, coo and uh, ms anupriya das uh, the head of corporate development uh, thanks everyone uh, for giving us the uh, opportunity to host this call and now over to mr nitish mittar sen mittar sen for his opening comments thanks sir thank you good morning everyone and a very warm welcome to all of you to nazar to to fy24 money call this is called joined by subhit our chief operating officer mr apesha nuclear sinadar as here i have a bit of i hope all of you are ready to go with me In Q2, FY24, our revenue increased by 13% year-on-year, reaching IRR to 97.2 crores. Our EBITDA grew by 30% year-on-year to IRR 27.9 crores, and our PAT increased to IRR 24.2 crores. For H1, FY24, we reported a revenue IRR 531.7 crores. And EBITDA for the same period reached the 61 crores, which is up 19 percent year-on-year, and a flat climb of 2 percent to IRR 45 crores. The EBITDA margin for the first uh, half of the year was recorded at 11.1 percent, compared to 10.6 percent in the comparative period of the previous year. The core tech business segments, gaming and esports, continue to grow. Specifically, the gaming segment. From your in-game revenue increase at a 43 percent EBITDA down in the first half, uh, while Q2 saw year-on-year 14 percent growth and a 46 percent EBITDA growth. In esports uh, segment, H1 FY24 saw 20 growth in revenue, a 16 percent growth in EBITDA, but Q2 saw 26 percent year-on-year growth in revenue and 61 percent uh, growth in EBITDA. Our ad tech business is still overcoming the challenges faced earlier due to the loss of a key customer, but our margin profile is improving quite well, especially driven by products business. And last two quarters, efforts of building a strong sales pipeline are likely to convert into much better results in the coming quarters. Also, our internal use of data with uh, user acquisition capability is yielding uh, promising results as we had originally envisaged. We have uh, right now, you know, experimented this with Admin Jam, and hope to expand it to many of our different businesses going forward. Overall, for the first half of the year, we believe that many of the consolidated well, focused uh, strongly on ensuring that the KPIs or the key performance indicators that we focus on, uh, you know, are in the right direction, and the business is generating cash, which will be deployed in coming quarters. For accelerating organic growth, as well as uh, to strategic, especially on the M&A front, given uh, the opportunities in front of us, we are quite confident that we will be able to deploy, you know, our cash reserves uh, quite well. We have over INR 1,300 crores of cash uh, on our consolidated book, including the INR 510 crores we recently raised in this quarter from Nikhil Kamath and SBI Mutual Fund. 
I believe uh, Nadar is well positioned to be able to acquisition opportunities to further accelerate our growth in the coming years. We also see a promising make in India opportunity in the gaming industry, where Indian developers can create high quality games not only for the home market but also for the world. Our new division, Nadara Publishing, is here to provide capital and services to assist developers in bringing top quality games to this growing consumer base. I would now like to hand over the call to Anupriya, our head of corporate development, to give some highlights of our performance uh, segment-wise in this quarter. Thank you very much, and over to you, Anupriya. Thank you, Nitish. Good morning, everyone. Wish you a very happy Diwali. As you are all aware, Nazara operates across three business segments, gaming, esports, and ad tech. Gaming includes gamified early learning, skill-based real money gaming, premium, and telco sub-segments. This segment grew by 19% year-on-year in H1 FI24 and 14% year-on-year in Q2 FI24, coupled with EBITDA growth of 43% year-on-year in H1 FI24 and 46% year-on-year in Q2 FI24. This segment contributed 39% in revenue and 68% in EBITDA in H1 FI24. The EBITDA margins for this business is a robust 22.7% in H1 FI24 and 20.9% in Q2 FI24. Now, within gaming, if we talk about specific IPs, Kidopia, the revenue grew by 8% year-on-year in H1 FI24 to 113.9 crores and 6% year-on-year in Q2 FI24 to 56.3 crores. EBITDA for the business increased 29 crores, a a year-on-year increase of 57%. In Q2 FI24, EBITDA increased by 46% to INR 12.9 crores. We've continued to focus on acquiring customers at an optimal cost to ensure healthy EBITDA margin. This has resulted in margin expansion. EBITDA margin increased from 17.5% in H1 FI23 to 25.5% in H1 FI24, while Q2 margins increased from 16.5% in Q2 FI23 to 22.9% in Q2 FI24. Seasonally weak quarter, which is the back to school post summer break, coupled with challenges in scaling up US spends via Google, has led to a 2.7% decline in subscribers in the current quarter. However, we are working closely with various ad networks to enhance scale of user acquisition while maintaining the optimal level of CPTs. We are also working on a multi pronged approach to bring growth back for Kidopia. This includes going beyond direct-to-consumer acquisition sources to school networks, licensing popular IPs to drive organic growth, focusing on scaling up new markets, and opening new revenue streams such as advertising and merchandising. While some of these initiatives will take take some time to show up in results, we are hopeful they will create a platform for stronger future growth. Moving on to Animal Jam, this is an IP we acquired in August 2022. Since then, we have worked on multiple things. Uh, we have optimized non-core costs, which has resulted in a beta margin of 24% in Q2 FY24, a significant increase from 11.6% in Q4 FY23. Within the product, the focus has been on improving monetization loops. This has resulted in a 46% year-on-year increase in APDAO in Q2 FY24. New user monetization increased to 2.0% in this quarter versus 1.4% in the time, at the time of acquisition in August 2022. We are working on licensing deals to introduce popular IPs within, the, within Animal Jam, which would drive organic growth. We expect to start scaling up marketing spends in the coming quarter to drive revenue growth as well. Moving to WCC, the revenue for the WCC franchises stood at INR 5.4 crores in Q2 FY24, with an EBITDA growth of 23% year-on-year. In Q2, we transitioned our main titles WCC2 to, and WCC3 to online-only mode, where customers who want to play offline have to pay and or all watch a rewarded video ad. This resulted in a lower daily and monthly active users, but we have not seen any dip in ad revenues. Further, this gives us more clarity on the true R4 of our players, and so we can increase spend on user acquisition that would help us scale up the this business to its true potential. We are also increasing focus on launching WCC in global markets where the R2 would be much higher. Going to Open Play, which is our IT in the skill-based real money gaming segment, 
This segment's revenue and EBITDA stood at INR 25.2 crores and INR 3.3 crores respectively in H1 FY24. In July 2023, the GST Council decided to levy a 28% tax on the entry fees of real money gains. This has come into effect from 1st October 2023. Due to the implementation of new GST tax regime from October 1st, we expect classic money to post an EBITDA loss in QC FY24 before stabilizing to break even by Q4 FY24 again. There have been industry-wide issues related to large claims from authorities over past tax liability. We continue to monitor this situation closely. With clarity on taxation, Nazara will seek to grow the open play business once it stabilizes from the GST impact, as well as actively explore attractive acquisition opportunities in the real money gaming segment. Moving to eSports, this segment grew by 21% in H1 FI24 and 26% year on year in Q2 FI24, coupled with an EBITDA growth of 16% in H1 FI24 and 61% year on year in Q2 FI24. This segment contributed to 52% in revenue and 28% in EBITDA in H1 FI24. Nordwin, uh, the revenue increased by 15% in H1 FI24 and 20% in Q2 FI24. A significant development in H1 FI24 was the return of BGMI. Nordwin conducted the second season of BGMI Master Series for India, which was telecasted on Star Sports and Rooters. Multiple events, including uh, PUBG Mobile Club Open, PMCO, and PUBG Mobile Team Pro League South Asia, PMPL, were held in international markets. As the popular games have on only recently returned, we expect momentum and IPs around these games and associated media rights to pick up going forward. H2 is usually the key period for Nordwin, where we have many established IPs and events scheduled. Our gaming accessories business, Zinc, launched gaming focused laptop series for the festive season. Some of the revenues during this period moved, moved into Q3 due to Diwali being in November this year. Moving to sports, Kira, we have reported a robust year-on-year -year growth of 50% to 87.2 crores in, Q in X1 FY24 and 47% year-on-year in Q2 FY24 to INR 41.4 crores. EBITDA for the business improved to 25.1 crores in H1 FY24, which is a growth of 44% year-on-year. Whereas for Q2 FY24, EBITDA increased to INA 9.6%, which is a growth of 32% year-on-year. -year. In the month of September, we are happy to announce that SportsClear crossed the 100 million users mark for the first time. We've been uh, able to significantly scale Pro Football Network, a business we acquired in March 2023. In September 23, uh, PSN was ranked as the number two NFL-focused website in the U.S. CFN business also achieved profitability, EBITDA profitability in September this year. Moving to AdTech, over the last year, we've been focusing on reducing low margin work and moving towards higher margin business clients and simultaneously expanding our client base to remove any further concentration risk. The loss of a key client continues to impact revenues in this quarter, resulting in a year-on-year -year decline of revenue from 50 to 50.2 crores in H1 FY24, compared to 67.6 crores for H1 FY23. However, the gross margin percentage has sharply improved from 18% to 24.6%, and total gross margins have also increased from 12.0 crores to 12.3 crores in the same period, showing that this revised approach is beginning to pay off. While gross margins have improved, data work EBITDA has declined from 6.8 crores in H1 FY23 to 3.2 crores in H1 FY24. This reflects a significantly higher investment in our sales and marketing efforts in the form of team overheads as well as marketing events. These investments in marketing during Q2 FY24 and the ongoing efforts in the current third quarter have significantly bolstered our pipeline and started leading to a higher conversion rate from our sales, of sales pipeline and the formation of key partnerships. Additionally, we have recently welcomed the senior marketing head who will spearhead marketing initiatives across all verticals. MediaWorks, the dedicated publisher monetization, monetization uh, solutions division of DataWorks, has earned the prestigious Google Certified Publisher Partner Certification. This is expected to help with increased market penetration in conjunction with new or ad monetization products being rolled out by MediaWorks. We continue to benefit from a close working between DataWorks and Animal Jam team, 
and expect to and expect to expand this to various other companies within our group. With this, I'll close my remarks here and would like to open the call for Q&A. I would request Mitesh Sudhir and Rakesh Shah to join me for the Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Jinesh Joshi from Prabhudas Liyadir Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, in the opening remarks, you mentioned that uh, due to this implementation of uh, new GST rate from October 1st, uh, we expect uh, Classic Ram to post an EBITDA loss in 3Q, but uh, we expect that to uh, stabilize in 4Q. Uh, so what I want to understand is uh, what changes are we instituting to kind of uh, get a break even within a quarter, uh, given the fact that uh, the tax rate on uh, full bet value is quite uh, discouraging. Uh, also, uh, also in order to attract players, I mean, do we plan to reduce our platform fee or give a higher joining bonus? Uh, what is uh, our plan here, basically? Hi, Janesh. Uh, this is Nitesh. Uh, so, the way the GST has been implemented, right, uh, there is a 28% tax on deposit now effective 1st of October. At this point of time, all the market players, including us, are absorbing the entire impact of this increase in tax and not passing the, the player. What that means is basically erodes our uh, margins and therefore we made a comment saying that, you know, in uh, Q3, some uh, level of uh, EBITDA loss as we optimize uh, the business. The way we are looking to come back to a break even and the early signs are quite positive is one, of course, as we knew that uh, this uh, change is coming up, you know, we had undertaken significant cost optimization measures. I think they are helpful to us. Second is, uh, you know, we will slightly increase our, our uh, commissions that we charge or the rates that we charge which will increase our net revenue. And the third, we have also, for example, incentivize the users to withdraw less. You know, there's a usually a very circular loop. People keep uh, withdrawing and again positive. So we are kind of incentivizing the users to keep money in the system rather than continuously withdraw and deposit to reduce our outgoing tax liability. So I think these are some ideas I'm sharing, but there is a lot of work and a lot of ideas that the team is implementing. And we are very confident that the business will stabilize uh, uh, very well and uh, then set a base for uh, future growth. I think from a Nazara perspective, all along, you know, we have been saying that for us, uh, getting clarity on uh, taxation and regulatory aspects of the real money giving space was very important before we took uh, much, uh, you know, more aggressive moves. I believe that that has uh, largely been achieved now. And therefore, we are in a good position to both push uh, aggressively for growth in open play going forward, as well as look at, you know, potential acquisitions in that space. Uh, sure, sir. Uh, got that. Uh, my second question is on esports. Uh, now, I believe esports was a medal event in the recently concluded uh, Asian Games. Uh, so, would you have any specific uh, data to share on uh, viewership and uh, sponsors, uh, which can give us some idea on the uh, acceptance uh, of the sport as such? Uh, also, I believe this time around the competition was on some uh, seven titles. Uh, so, how does the selection of the game happen and uh, do you expect uh, the titles to rise going forward? Today's the first part of the question uh, just woke up a bit. Can you just quickly summarize it, please? Yeah. So, uh, eSports was a medal event in the recently concluded Asian Games. Uh, so, do you have any specific uh, data on viewership and uh, sponsors uh, which you would want to share uh, that can give us some idea with respect to the acceptance of the sports as such? So, 
So, answering your second question first is that the Asian Games are, you know, currently uh, chosen by the Olympic Committee, OCA, and uh, sorry, not the yeah, other by the OCA, and it was broadcast on Sony Live. Uh, we do not have a very specific data on it, but I think it's a great first uh, start for you know uh, esports to be you know, brought into the Asian Games. I think it just helps create that credibility of esports being seen as a as a you know proper sport, and even the the uh, recent comments you know, they will look at bringing on uh, esports into the Olympics soon. Uh, so I think uh, all in all, it's a very positive thing. There were no separate sponsors uh, other than the Asian Games sponsors specifically for this. Uh, uh, got that. Uh, thank you so much, sir, and all the best. Thank you. Would like to remind participants that if you wish to join the question queue, you may press star and one now. The next question is from the line of uh, Mr. Abhishek Kumar from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning and um, congratulations on on fundraise. Uh, really, some marquee uh, investors there. Uh, so my question is on uh, the the utilization of of these funds. Um, you know, one. Uh, while you know it, it's given in one of the slides, the area that you are looking at, but in terms of timelines, uh, do we have any timelines by which we we want to deploy um, uh, these funds? Uh, and then I have a follow up. So, so Abhishek, uh, we've uh, you know built a pretty strong pipeline uh, in uh, I would say in most of this year and last uh, last 12 months I would say. And the market is very conducive for us to be able to, you know, potentially acquire businesses at, uh, you know, attractive prices and that uh, businesses that we believe can grow well for us in the future. So we, we are having a strong pipeline. We are looking at, uh, you know, trying to take some of these across the finish line in the next couple of quarters. Uh, but uh, we are not in some tearing hurry. We want to make sure that just because we have raised capital, no, we don't randomly buy anything uh, which is not helpful for us. So we want to be very prudent about how we deploy. At the same time, I think uh, we'd love to see, uh, you know, some uh, deployment of this capital before the end of uh, the current financial year. Okay. Uh, and maybe a related question was that, see, we are already, uh, even before this uh, preferential money comes in, uh, we were sitting at 820-odd crore of uh, cash, and it is well distributed across um, uh, across our subsidiaries. So, I mean, I was just wondering uh, uh, what was the need of, I mean, do we really need 500 crores additional? Um, and is the money which is lying in different uh, subsidiary, uh, uh, you know, fungible enough for us to uh, kind of uh, make, make uh, acquisitions at the corporate level? So, to answer your second question first, uh, you know, we see lot of opportunities on the m a side for the specific uh, you know subsidiaries uh, running their own businesses and therefore it is uh, most uh, efficient for us to deploy the capital directly from there rather than bring it back to uh, the corporate uh, at this point of time if they had not seen opportunities in each of these businesses then we would probably you know try to do that but at this point of time, we have, uh, you know, acquisition pipelines in each of our businesses, whether it is uh, the gamified learning business, whether it is the e-sports business, sports feeder, et etc. So the idea is to really uh, deploy from there uh, to buy businesses uh, or opportunities that will add value to each of that segment. Uh, in terms of uh, why did we pull in additional capital, I think we're really at a point of time where the value opportunity for us is significant and I'd love to see us be able to take, uh, you know, some larger uh, transactions uh, than what we have done in the past. And therefore, we wanted to make sure that we have uh, money in the bank. It puts us in a very strong uh, negotiation, uh, you know, space. We can negotiate hard and close some good deals. That was really the intent to preempt uh, our strategy. Okay. Okay. And Maybe one last question uh, on the strategic uh, direction uh, from these, uh, you know, acquisitions. So, at one, uh, you know, on one hand, we are saying that we are, you know, so we have we have already launched the publishing business. 
and at the same time, uh, you know, um, we are looking to acquire. And from what I read on the on the presentation, uh, some of the game studios. Uh, so just wanted to understand <clears throat> where do we want to position ourselves, uh, uh, you know, as a, as a publisher, publishing platform, uh, allowing uh, game studios and developers, uh, a, you know, an opportunity to uh, really build games, etc. Or, uh, you know, uh, in the medium term, I mean, or, or do we really want to be ourselves, uh, you know, uh, game studios building these games, uh, you know, for various platforms? Thank you. Yeah, I think... Uh both of these activities, which is acquiring and owning uh, our own game studios, as well as uh, providing a platform that allows publishing, especially in a market like India, which is, you know, uh, much anticipated to grow big, and a lot of Indian developers as well as global developers, you know, want to access this market, are both very complementary and synergistic. A lot of our learning from uh, the studios that we operate can be, you know, replicated in the publishing uh, initiative and be very helpful to the third-party developers uh, that we bring in. Uh, publishing, of course, will be without equity in, to the developers, but uh, the studios that we really like, uh, we may also acquire. So actually, the publishing can also become a fantastic funnel for future acquisitions by Nazara. That's, that's very helpful. Thank you and all the best. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Mr. Mukul Garg from Motilal Oswal Financial Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, so, Niti is just uh, following up on, on this uh, Nazara publishing. Uh, can you share some thoughts on uh, you know how uh, you you are seeing the you know, value emerging from, you know, this model over the medium term, uh, while you have committed for minimum one crore investment in each game, uh, generally how uh, it would play out if a game is start winning traction, uh, will your investment be more about, you know, kind of uh, as a stake thing or, you know, as a publishing, you know, kind of platform, uh, you know, what other kind of return opportunities you can generate out of it in the longer term? Uh, and then I have a subsequent question. Sure. So there are two aspects to this uh, when we allocate capital in our publishing. Uh, one is uh, developers who require capital to develop the game, build their teams, fund the teams, etc. I think if we deploy capital there, that would go in the form of equity and we would have a stake in the company. And then there are developers who may have games that they have already made or already self-invested in. And they are just looking for a publisher to, you know, bring it to the market, uh, you know, invest capital in user acquisition, for example, provide some additional support in terms of game design, live operations, uh, etc. So I think uh, depending on which developer on a case-by-case basis, we may take equity stakes, uh, you know, upfront or not uh, in these uh, developers. In terms of the long-term strategy for publishing, we believe that, uh, you know, how can Nazara create a very large uh, consumer base across, you know, a large number of high-quality games that we publish. We also intend to launch a Nazara SDK, which will be embedded in each of these games. And hopefully that will help us build a very large network, which can then provide additional value additions as the ability to cross-promote, have uh, more first-party data, so we're not looking at this broadly from a standalone uh, success of a game, but also building out the publishing network over a period of time. Right. And just uh, to follow up question on this, uh, you know, a, uh, you know, are you kind of now beginning to look at, uh, you know, kind of uh, positive, uh, you know, kind of spend from users uh, on, you know, these games in India? Uh, and you can kind of like you know uh, talk a little bit about WCC also how you see the longer term profile because uh, it has been in a fairly narrow range uh, and the you know obviously monetization hasn't been uh, that positive as of now and and yeah. second uh, you know uh, you what what was the impression you know you got uh, at IGDC uh, are you seeing you know an improvement in the quality of games coming out and the interest in people. Sure. So I think uh, with growing consumer base and the more time consumers are spending, Indian consumers are spending playing games on their phone, uh, 
the more they are evolving into starting to pay for it. So I think incrementally the deputy is starting to see better IAP conversions, although they are still far behind what you would see as local standards or you know evolved markets like US. But I believe that this will accelerate, and that's what we are kind of uh, gearing ourselves for. Also, you know, micro payments, UPI, digital payments in India have progressed so well that they are going to be a very strong tailwind for users making these uh, IAPs. Uh, secondly, to your question on WCC, I think we are surely a little frustrated in terms of how WCC has not scaled up because uh, the franchise is so strong and the game is so uh, you know well developed over many years. And I think there's a lot more that can be achieved over here. And for towards that, there's several things we have done. One is we kind of brought in a new CEO who's uh, you know coming from background of electronic arts, etc. And we spent the last six months doing a lot of uh, groundwork to get the game ready for a much larger launch. The other thing you must have noticed in our presentation is that uh, we are making some key decisions uh, which may disrupt the status quo that has been for the last 20 quarters or years. For example, you know, we moved all our users to online only mode because there were a lot of users playing offline which we were unable to monetize. Now by moving users online, uh, we are able to increase the ARPU per user and therefore our LTV CAC equation becomes much better and that should allow us to scale up. A lot more focus has been increased on live maintaining much more uh, live operations versus just content updates. I think there's a lot of activity happening in the back end and I'm hopeful that by Q4 we should be able to you know start spending a lot more in WCC to scale it to the level it really should uh, deserve. The last question you had was on IGDC. Zara was a diamond sponsor at IGDC this year and uh, was very well received. What we are seeing on the ground is there is a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm by many indie and young developers. There were a few thousand developers there. We also hosted, in fact, we hosted a lunch exclusively for you know new and upcoming developers, uh, which was very well received. And we've had for our publishing, uh, new launch of our publishing division, already I think close to 100 applications that have come in uh, from developers for the games. I think very great start. I'm enthused that the Make in India story in India is going to be very big for gaming. And that's exactly an area of the focusing. It may not become a very large source of monetization for Nazara immediately, but I think strategically and eventually this will be very important for us. Sure. And just if I may ask one more question, um, you know, on Kidopia, the activation rate continues to moderate down. Uh, any any color on that, uh, or is it more uh, volatility and should not be kind of uh, stay there for longer term? No, I think, uh, you know, we've been using Google as the main source of uh, uh, user acquisition. And uh, unfortunately, we have not been able to scale our spends. You know, we have been trying to scale our spends, but uh, the spend has not grown beyond, uh, you know, the steady state, $800,000 a month, $900,000 a month. So there are two three things we are doing. One is we are very actively working with very senior teams at Google and they are responding very well with us to try and solve this uh, scale up problem. Uh, you know, we are getting activations in the range that we want, but we are not able to scale. So hopefully both the teams working together will uh, find some solution. We're also considering going back to some of the other strong ad networks that we were working with earlier, uh, where we hope we can open more scale. And then as we mentioned, and Anupya spoke a bit about it, we're also trying to find alternate ways of uh, growth versus just linear user acquisition spend growth. I think I think generally for our kids games, not specifically just Kidopia, but even Animal Jam or any other uh, game that we may acquire, I think uh, IP licensing uh, could be a very powerful way to break through this uh, log jam uh, of uh, user acquisition. And we're in advanced conversations with a few IPs, well-known IPs, to bring them into our games. Uh, that could boost our ability to do better user acquisition as well as drive a lot more organic growth. So these are the ideas we're currently working on. Perfect. Great. Thanks for answering my question. Thank you so much. Participants who wish to join the question queue may press star and one at this time.
the next question is from the line of Mr. Manan Poladia from MKP Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good morning. Am I audible? Sorry? Yes, yes sir, you're audible. All right, thank you. Uh, hi, good morning, team. Uh, first of all, congratulations on posting a great set. So uh, I have a couple of questions. The first one is on the eSports side, specifically Northwind. So what I want to understand is I understand that currently we're in an investment phase for Northwind, etc. And we are not really focused on driving EBITDA margins or EBITDA per chance. What I want to understand is in the long term, say from a 5, 10 fiscal sort of perspective, what sort of margin would we be aiming at in the future for uh, Northwind? And check, just uh, follow up on that. Uh, the content use from H1 FR 23 to 24 have dropped from 377 million to 221 million. Is there a specific reason for that? Maybe certain IPs being pushed, like BGM is coming here and the Diwali IP is going afterwards. So if you could just clarify on that. Sorry, your second question was? So my second question was on the content use dropping from 377 million to 221 million in H1 FR 24 versus H1 FR 23. I just wanted to understand the disparity between this. Is it because some IPs have been postponed or Q1 didn't have BGMI IPs? Yeah, no. So on the second question, a lot of, you know, uh, as you know, a lot of these uh, games uh, were, uh, the popular games were banned which came in in Q1. And uh, it takes, uh, you know, some time for, also some of these popular games, uh, when they came in, you know, the government had announced that they will review it in three months or six months, I think. I think it was three months. So I think a lot of the launches uh, around these were tentative and uh, while we did successfully do the BGMS on Star Sports, I think uh, there's some lag effect. There's been some push, uh, some push, uh, you know, uh, into the next quarters. Uh, in terms of the, the IP uh, spread, uh, you know, across uh, quarters, you will see much more back-ended into H2. Uh, we've got a slew of IPs happening in October, November, December, which is the main season. And uh, also in the first quarter of, uh, sorry, Q4 of uh, this year, which is uh, Jan to March. In terms for, uh, in terms of margins, I think, uh, I mean, our stated policy on Nordman has been that we need to strategically grow. Uh, over a period of time, we are very hopeful that these margins will, uh, you know, increase upwards of 10, 15%. Uh, but we don't have a specific uh, guidance on that at this point, okay? Correct. I understand. Thank you so much. Uh, secondly, uh, my other question is basically an accounting question. All I want to understand is, so if you look at your PNL for this quarter, uh, sequentially at least, uh, there has been this large jump in purchase of stock and trade and change in inventories of stock and trade. And I'm guessing uh, it has something to do with gaming, but I'm not completely sure. If you could just provide some clarity on that. Uh, you're talking about stock? So, uh, no, when you look at the PNL, there is the first expense line item, which is purchase of stock and trade, and the second one, which is change in inventory. This is basically to do a link to our uh, Wings uh, gaming accessories, because this is the main season, uh, you know, the big billion day on Flipkart, etc. So you would see more stock acquired uh, for, for the sale of that. Okay, okay, correct. So this will, the profits of this will start showing in uh, Q3, I assume. Yeah, I mean, again, this business has grown very well for us from the time we acquired. So uh, we're still building on the brand, etc. So it's a low margin business still for us, but uh, growing uh, quite well. Uh, we've got, you know, Sukhman Gill and good brand ambassadors and all on it. So we're right now looking to grow the, uh, grow the brand and the scale of it uh, while remaining profitable. That's our approach. Yeah, sir. I understand. Thank you so much for answering the questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of uh, Mr. Rahul Jain from Dalit Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just uh, wanted to uh, check about this uh, animal jam business, uh, the metric on uh, ARP, DRU, or the thirty uh, basis monetization has improved, but we see that the revenue uh, have been uh, pretty stable, although we have done well on the margin. So what kind of thought process we should imply here? Do we see some scalability challenges from a demand side of it? Or uh, because if these metrics are up, 
uh, somewhere possibly the churn might have gone up. Uh, so if you could explore on this thought and uh, how we could see growth here from medium term perspective. Uh, well, thanks for that question. So we really limited that one. Um, so I think if you look at Animal Jam uh, and why it works for companies makes sense. So since we acquired it last year, the emphasis has very much been on uh, fixing a lot of the underlying basics first. The first couple of quarters was really around that. And since then, um, as you would have seen, uh, the result has been that the margins are now increased significantly. So our uh, revenues are still, if you look at it, slightly flat, but that is a misleading picture because this is also seasonal. Uh, and the peak season for Animal Jam, uh, because the target kids in the US is actually this current quarter and the next quarter, with Halloween, uh, New Year, etc., even coming up. So that's where you'll actually see the revenue scale up begin to happen. Uh, but, but just to step back, essentially what we're saying is that uh, we've kind of fixed the margins of the business now. The last couple of quarters have been steady now at 22-24% kind of margins compared to maybe even single digits when we started. Um, and the revenue scale-up is something that uh, is beginning to happen. Um, there is a lot more that needs to be done in terms of both user acquisition and uh, maybe brand-related investments in that in the coming months. But we're fairly uh, comfortable that those uh, initiatives are available. Right. <clears throat> Sorry, I missed the uh, part in case you uh, sh shared about the churn. Uh, what has been the behavior on a one-year basis? Um, so this is not a subscription business, so I don't think churn is the right word here. Or you I'm can say to... maybe the paid user, uh, whatever way you want to track. Uh -huh. So the paid numbers had uh, uh, dropped slightly, but uh, they've actually been coming back quite strongly you now. So if you look at the total number, I mean, it's eventually it's the revenue that you will see, and we're quite comfortable that in the coming quarters you will see much better numbers there. Understood, understood. And on the uh, on the ad tech side, uh, given that the, you know we have a lot of positioning uh, in the Western world, and there uh, what we are seeing with other ad tech businesses, uh, the challenges continues. So uh, what are uh, the thought here from a one or two year perspective? Um, Dataverse, which is our primary uh, vehicle for ad tech, is, uh, if you look at that, that's a services business. So it's definitely not immune to what is happening in the broader ad tech space or advertising space, if you will. Um, ECPMs are definitely under pressure uh, globally. Um, that said, uh, what Dataworks does is we provide a service to customers who are looking to deploy uh, money for user acquisition. What we've seen is that uh, we're focusing on moving towards higher margin plans, also focusing more on the product side of things. Um, that is definitely beginning to have an impact. Uh, we, of course, our scale is way too small, so we don't, uh, uh, I mean, there's a lot of room left to grow that business and to keep growing the margins from where we are. Uh, we also see that as more of a strategic capability, which we can use for our other games. Um, so we've done that in Animal Jam, but they had a pretty positive impact. Uh, we're starting to do a lot of work also using DataWorks on next wave now, uh, and potentially on other companies that we acquire. And uh, one way <coughs> interesting data you shared is that PFN will possibly scale to the uh, number two position and. What I understand, it's a very, very large market when I look at the uh, the top guy out there. So, uh, so uh, do you see uh, a very, very hyper scalability potential in near term in that business, just like we saw for the main uh, SK business? Um, so, uh, sorry, can you repeat that? I couldn't get the last part of it. So the last part was like, uh, I mean, uh, in a way, we could uh, say that the sports leader growth and margin profile. Uh, scaled up very, very sharply in the la last couple of years. So do we see, uh, uh, and the market for uh, PFN is also very, very large. So that way, you see that uh, that scale up on a very small base could be very, very steep in the next couple of years. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, when we had acquired uh, uh, PFN uh, around different time, so if you remember at that time, it was still a negative margin business. And uh, I think we had mentioned at that time that uh, we are looking to have a break-even year with them. Um, I'm glad to kind of note that in September, we already had a break-even month uh, for PSN. Um, we 
do expect the margins to keep increasing on that business, and uh, Sportsleda has proven a playbook of how to grow uh, EBITDA margins and profitability, and they're uh, deploying that quite well in BFN as well. Um, the amount of scale that it can reach in terms of revenue is definitely much higher than where they are today. Uh, but uh, I think it'll be a good combination of both revenue as well as profitability growth that we should see uh, on that business. Understood. Understood. Thanks. Uh, that that's it from my side. Thanks. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Nathin Jain from Fairview Investments Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on a good quarter. <clears throat> so uh, my first question is, uh, you know, last year you gave out a full year guidance uh, for the company, uh, entire company, after the Q2 results. So this year you have uh, not given any guidance. So like how should we interpret this? Is there, you know, uh, uncertainty in the business going forward or if you can elaborate? Uh, I'll take this. Uh, this is the fish. No, I think uh, we are quite confident that uh, Q3, Q4 will, you know, pick up from uh, H1. I think uh, what we found in the last couple of years is when we give a hard guidance, right, uh, in trying to make sure we meet that guidance, a lot of strategic decisions uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, become questionable in terms of, you know, whether we should do or not. We really don't know to box ourselves by giving a guidance. If you believe, for example, that, uh, uh, let's say, Kidopia or uh, Animal Jam, we get fantastic uh, acquisition opportunity and we're able to massively scale up our user acquisition, right? So now we don't want to be saying, you know, we'll give the ex beta guidance and therefore we should restrain ourselves and we need to be able to take such opportunity. So we just don't want to box ourselves uh, by, take, uh, by not being able to take important strategic decisions. That's the, that's the purpose. Okay, uh, got that. So just to follow up on that, uh, like I'm not looking for numbers, but uh, directionally, <clears throat> how do we see the year panning out compared to FY23? Yeah, so I think uh, directionally, uh, we should continue to see uh, higher growth than H1 uh, in terms of the revenues and also a higher growth on EBITDA uh, for the rest of the year. Uh, that's what we are working towards. Okay, no, I mean, uh, okay, great. Uh, so in terms of the uh, margin, we should be better than last year or? Yeah, definitely. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, and my next question is uh, on Kidopia. So uh, the unit economics, uh, they seems to, seem to have deteriorated like for second quarter in a row. And also our margin improvement is <clears throat> uh, more, you know, uh, out of the inability to scale up our spend. So uh, how do we read this? Like, is it out of uh, increased competitive intensity in the business? Uh, because, you know, larger players like uh, ABC Mouse, they're seeing a good growth. And also uh, on Kidopia, last year, I think there was a mention of taking this business to specific geographies in Europe, like I think Germany. So is that still on card? Thank you. And that's all from me. So the unit metrics, uh, uh, we generally found them largely in a range uh, once you factor in seasonality. I'm not sure if you're uh, you know, talking about any specific uh, metric you want to highlight. Yeah, so I mean uh, the CPT is back to like around uh, $39. Yeah. Uh, and uh, our subscriber growth uh, has, uh, you know, as second quarter in over it has declined. So, and ARPUs again, they are, you know, kind of on a declining trend. No, so, you know, we've been doing a lot of experiments. See, our uh, CPT has been largely in the range of 26 to $38. But in a attempt to unshackle, uh, you know, the scalability issue, uh, we've been experimenting, trying to see whether, you know, increasing the CPT a little bit increases our scale, etc. So I think a lot of that you are seeing is, uh, you know, experimental work. Even the our food slide decline this quarter, which will recover in Q3, is because we did add some summer promotions uh, to see, you know, whether that gives us a spike. So I think because we want to obviously break out of this uh, plateau that we are at, uh, we obviously are doing a lot of experimentation. So I think that is uh, what we're seeing. Uh, nothing much uh, beyond that. In terms of competitive pressures, actually, if you look at uh, some of the similar web type of uh, or app any data. Even animal, even EBC mouth has declined in the last two quarters. So it's not that uh, it's specific to Kidopia. 
Rupee in fact uh, continues to remain strongly a number two uh, behind ABC Mounts. So we are not so worried about that. I think in our mind, we have to find alternate ways to break through this logjam. And we are, as mentioned in a row, in a, you know, elaborated few of these, we have, uh, you know, started working on a few of these ideas. Lastly, on the Germany thing, we had done an experiment at that point of time, it had not done great. Uh, so we are kind of focused. Then the IDFA issue had happened, so we had gone back to focus on the US markets. But one of our growth strategies now is to try and aggressively open new markets as well. Okay, great. And just one last uh, follow up on uh, Kidope again. So uh, last time we took a price hike, uh, <clears throat> you had given some data, uh, you know, showing how we are, how Kidopia was still uh, uh, cheaper compared to uh, the other subscription. So yeah. do we see ourselves, uh, you know, uh, exploiting that uh, that gap going forward or uh, not not as yet? No, we are not looking at immediately doing further price hikes. I think our focus right now is uh, singularly on how do we increase the acquisition. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you so much. And a happy Diwali. Wish you the same. Thank you. The next question is from the line of uh, Mr. Manan Polaria from MKP Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, hi, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Thank you for giving me the opportunity again. Sir, what I also want to understand is uh, when we speak about sports Kida and PFN, so PFN, I think going forward is going to be a much larger portion of sports Kida, from what I understand. Uh, what, and the larger player is significantly larger, right? I just want to understand what kind of scale are we looking at with respect to PFN, say, in the next three to five years? So, Dave, you want to take it? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I don't think we can give specific guidance on PFN itself, but uh, one thing I can definitely say is uh, if you look at NFL, right? NFL is the largest sports market in the US, in fact, even in the world. Um, it's, it's, if I recall correctly, something like 56% of the total uh, sports market in the US. Um, PFN is still quite small, as you said, compared to the beta. There's a lot of room to grow from where we are. Um, I think our focus is very much that we want to keep scaling up the number of users, and we've seen that successfully starting to happen. Uh, the main uh, NFL season itself is September onwards, so we're still in the second month of this year's season, it's not until about Jan Um So we do expect to see much higher user numbers compared to last year, and uh, I think that then we will start giving you some more uh, breakup or clarity on uh, what is the kind of revenue and user numbers we begin to see from this festival. But I think at this point, it's too early to look at how much it can grow. We just know that it can grow a lot. Correct. Thank you. Uh, my second, sorry. Sorry, there's one other small point on this which I should mention, which is uh, when right. we acquired uh, uh, PSN, one of the key things we're also looking at is the synergies between PSN and Sportskira. And Sportskira, as you know, also has a strong presence in the US. And combined with PSN and Sportskira, we think that now provides us a critical mass to start looking at much more uh, direct selling uh, to customers, which also then uh, will help drive profitability a bit much more than, uh, or even higher than what it is right now, especially for PSN and going to make a big difference. So we just want to mention that. Right, thank you. Thank you so much for answering that question. Uh, my second question is with regards to the new watches that we've built, about 1,300 crores or so. So what I wanted to understand is when we're looking at acquisitions uh, from here going forward, is there one a specific scale or size that we're looking at? Secondly, are we looking at acquiring in different businesses than we already are in, or are we looking at acquiring with respect to, say, bolt-on acquisitions where we can develop synergies? I, I'll take this. So in terms of uh, the scale of acquisitions, uh, like I mentioned, uh, if something is very strategic to us, we may do a bolt on for a smaller business, and most likely that will happen at the subsidiary level and not at the corporate level. Uh, we're looking at larger acquisitions at the corporate level. Uh, while uh, there's no necessarily any specific number, but I would say we would look at at least businesses generating 100 crores upwards of revenue uh, at a minimum level, ideally. So that that's what's uh, and and largely being profitable. So I think that's what we're looking at it. Uh, we are definitely not looking at launching any new segments 
our business at this point of time. I think there's a lot more that can be done in our core gaming, IT, uh, sports, uh, esports, and even ad tech business. So I think whatever acquisitions will be done will be one way or other synergistic to our existing business. Correct. So I have just a small follow up to that. Now that we've spoken about RMG in this call as well, right? That uh, all the regulation has happened and that 20% GST slab has come in. So are we looking at RMG now more positively or are we still looking at uh, letting the industry stabilize for a bit and then get into RMG acquisitions? What is the situation there? Plus, uh, what kind of games? Like, are we only focusing on Rummy or are we going to do poker, team, patti as well? So specific to RMG are. Uh, we are looking at it as glass half full, which means we are leaning positively uh, towards seeing what are the opportunities. And we have, even earlier, we were in very active discussions with a lot of players. So I think within the open play business, there could be bolt-on acquisitions for sure, and there are some discussions going on. Uh, we could look at some at some new formats outside of the existing open play business as well, uh, where we will be. We will only go into new formats if we believe that we can be a leader in that segment, uh, else we will not. Uh, but within the open play business, uh, we'll definitely look at consolidation. I think the only one thing we need to uh, uh, figure out at this point of time is the past. Many of these companies are sitting with past tax claims right now. And how do we navigate that piece while uh, doing any m &A activity is something we're trying to figure out. Correct, correct. Thank you, Nidus. Thank you for answering my questions. Thank you so much. As there are no further questions, on behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you, everyone, for joining, and wish everyone a happy Diwali.